Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing how to fix your Veracrypt encrypted system drive if it doesn't boot. You'll need the Veracrypt rescue disk that you created when you initially encrypted your system drive, and you'll need to know the password for your encrypted drive. If you have the rescue disk but don't remember the password, or if you remember the password but don't have the rescue disk, then it won't work. You need both. So to start, I'm going to break my Veracrypt config on my SSD, and then use the rescue disk to show how to fix it. When I first boot up and I go into my BIOS, in my boot order, there are two options here, a Windows bootloader entry and a Veracrypt bootloader entry. So when I exit the BIOS, it'll boot the Veracrypt bootloader. And as expected, it asks for the password to decrypt my system drive, so I'm gonna put it in. And then put in your PIM. For me, I have no PIM, so I'm gonna leave it as empty. And as expected, it's booting into Windows. And I'm going to log in. And here I'm going to open up Command Prompt as Administrator. Yes. And I'm going to run Disk Part. I'm going to list my disk. Select Disk 0. I'm going to list my partitions. And I'm going to select my EFI partition. For me, it's partition number one, the system partition, 100 megabytes. And I'm going to be assigning it a drive letter. I'll be assigning a drive letter Z. Assign letter equals Z. I'm going to exit out. I'm going to go into my Z drive, DIR, go into the EFI directory, DIR. You can see there's a Microsoft directory, a Veracrypt directory, and a boot directory. To make it easier, I'm going to open up a window. And so I'm going to go into my Z drive, the EFI directory, and there are the three folders, boot, Microsoft, and Veracrypt. And so in the boot directory, there's a bootx64.efi file, and this is a backup of the Veracrypt bootloader. And here is an original bootx64.vc underscore backup which was the EFI file that was here prior to my system drive being encrypted. So going back, and then there's the Veracrypt folder. And in this folder here, it has everything that you need in order to decrypt your system drive so you can boot into Windows. So to break my Veracrypt configuration, I can corrupt these files here, or I can simply just delete them. And so I'm gonna delete this folder. I'm gonna get out of it. Delete the Veracrypt folder, yes. And then I'll also delete the boot folder as well, yes. Now, if you're planning to try this, what I've noticed is that when the Veracrypt folder is deleted in Windows and you restart, it may not actually get deleted. The folder will still be there when you reboot and are able to get back into Windows, even though, as we see here, that there's no Veracrypt directory. So what I've had to do is delete it from outside of Windows to get it permanently removed. But in this case, I'll continue like it's actually been permanently removed. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. And in the BIOS, I only have one entry now, the Windows Boot Manager entry. And there's no Veracrypt bootloader entry there as I've deleted the folder. So it's going to boot the Windows Boot Manager. But because my system drive is encrypted, this won't work and I won't be able to get into Windows. Now I'm going to plug in my USB drive, which has the Veracrypt Rescue Disk. And so the Veracrypt Rescue Disk starts up, and there's many options here. D is Decrypt OS, which will permanently decrypt my operating system, which I don't want to do. M is Restore Veracrypt Loader to the boot menu. So if I try that, nothing happens. And the next option is Z, Remove Veracrypt Loader from the boot menu which doesn't apply here because I'm trying to restore. And C, which is restore Veracrypt loader configuration to system disk, sounds reasonable. But if I select it, it gives a message not found, which makes sense because everything has been deleted. And then there's K, restore OS header keys, which is not what I need here. But if I select it and ask for the password, and put in my PIM, and then it asks to select my disk here. So zero is my rescue disk, so it's not that. 
and then so it's to my SSD drive. So if I select it and I restore, yes. But this won't help. What I actually need to do is use R, restore Veracrypt loader binaries to system disk. And then we see here Veracrypt loader restored to disk successfully. And if I were to exit out, now it's asking me for my password. And then the PIM, enter. And then here it's asking me for the hash compared to before where it wouldn't ask for this information. And in my case, it's SHA-512. And the reason why that it's asking me for the hash is because it doesn't have the Veracrypt loader configuration. So if I were to select my hash, I'll be able to boot into Windows, but I'll have to do this each time. So to fix this, I'm going to restart the Veracrypt loader configuration as well. I'm going to restart and go back into the rescue disk. And then back in the rescue disk, now I'm going to use C, which is restore Veracrypt loader configuration to the system disk and then exit. Put in my password. And then the PIM, the prompt looks more familiar. It's authorizing and success. And as you can see, it doesn't ask for the hash there. And I'm back in Windows. Now, one thing to note when comparing how it looks before and after. So on the left hand side, I have my USB drive with the Veracrypt rescue disk. And then I'm inside the EFI Veracrypt folder. And then here's my Z drive in the EFI Veracrypt folder. And we're going to see that there's two files that are not here on the Z drive. So the two files are the DCS info file and the SVH back file. But I was still able to decrypt my system drive and boot into Windows. However, it's not recommended. So I'm going to be copying these two files over into my Z drive. Now, if you're not able to open up the Z drive in Explorer, then you can just do this in Command Prompt. So open up a Command Prompt as Administrator. And I'm going to go into my Z drive, go into the EFI directory, and then Veracrypt. And I'm going to copy from my USB drive, the D drive, EFI, Veracrypt, DCS info, dot DCS, into the current directory. And then I'm also going to copy the SVH back file, which is the backup of the encrypted system volume header, into the current directory. And now I go back, do a refresh, and we see the files are there. And if you go back into your BIOS and you check your boot options, you'll see the Veracrypt bootloader entry there again. So that's it. That's how you can fix your Veracrypt encrypted system drive if it doesn't boot. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.